Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at calculated fields. Now I know calculated fields have actually been out since the release of 2015, but I get a lot of questions specifically about you know what they are and how they work. A lot of people just haven't had a chance to play with them a little bit. So I just want to show you some of the ins and outs and just some of the, the different little tricks that you can do from a calculated field perspective. The premise behind a calculated field is really just as it sounds. You're going to perform some type of calculation. Now, that could be a calculation where you want to calculate the annual revenue of something. You want to add specific items together. Um, but that also could be used for pre-population. One of the nice things with calculated fields is you have the capabilities to actually pull values from other related records and feed them directly into a record. And those are some of the things that we want to show you as we look at and explore calculated fields. So let's just go ahead and hop right into the application and just take a look at, at how they work. So I have a solution that I've created here that has some specific items that I want to work with. So in essence, what I've done here is just created a couple of different custom entities. So I have a custom entity called event and I have a custom entity called registrations with concept being here that we host events or we have events maybe throughout the country that we have people that come to. And like any event that's coming in, we're going to have people that are going to register for that event. So they're going to hop in, they're going to register for the event and then have information from there and those people who are going to register for the event are typically going to be contacts and so we're going to have contact information that needs to get entered into that event so the concept being really that I have a lot of information that is already on the contact record and I want to be able to feed that directly into the event registration. Now I could do field mapping and set up the relationships and map the information, but if you remember from a field mapping perspective, that only works when new records are created. So in the context of the parent record, what if you just want to create a new registration just kind of on the fly and you want to grab an event and you also want to be able to go in and, and grab a contact and have that information feed in. And with the same concept being that maybe you don't necessarily have a developer on staff who can do client-side scripting to accomplish that. And so those are some of the types of different things that we're going to show you specifically when we come into this. Now, what I've done in advance of this is obviously I have a custom entity called event and I have a custom entity called registration and I have the out of the box entity called contact. I do have a registration that set up with so what I've done is I've set up a relationship between event and um, registration where one event can have multiple registrations associated with it and I've set up a one-to-many relationship with contact and with registration because obviously one contact could register for multiple events. So the relationships have to be set up specifically if you're going to try to pull information from the parent record and those are one of the things that we'll show you when we go in. But let's go ahead and just kind of first set up just a, a generic calculated field and, and just show you kind of the premise behind that. So I'm going to go into my registration entity and on my registration entity, I am going to go ahead and click on fields. And so now in here, I have several fields that have already kind of been set up. And some of these actually are calculated fields pulling in from other areas. And I'll show you a little bit behind that. But specifically, one of the fields that I already have in here is what's called uh, an event cost. And so this event cost is actually a calculated field that's pulling the cost of an event from the events entity that we have in the application. And then I have another item called number in party, which basically is set up on the registration. So when somebody registered, they can decide how many people they want to register for the event. So what I want to do here is I want to have a calculated field that is in essence just going to multiply these two fields together. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a new calculated field. And I'll just call this total cost. and we'll make it a currency field. And then I'll go ahead and switch it to calculated. Now, as soon as I hit edit, this is going to save the field. So the data types and everything's are gonna be locked in there at that point. So it's important to make sure that you already have the data types predetermined when you're, before you hit the edit button. Um, at, Cause like I said, it will save it at that point. And now you can go ahead and, and distribute your calculation. Now what you'll see from here is it's very similar to what you would see from a business rule editor. Now in this case, I can leave the condition just kind of blank and I can just define the specific action that I want to take place. So I'm going to click on add action. 
and I'm going to go ahead and type in whatever that is. And now it's going to list all the different kind of functions and fields that are available for me to use as part of this calculated field based upon the data type and the entity and those types of situations. So for example, I might want to say event cost. So I'll start to type in event and I'll see that I have my custom field here called total event cost or event cost. So I'll add that, hit my multiplication. Then I'll go ahead and I want to multiply the event cost by the number of people in party. Now, in this case, I'm going to just go ahead and use my prefix to predetermine this down to the items that I have, choose number in party, and then I can go ahead and click on OK. Now, if you had any issues with this, maybe you use the wrong field type based upon the type of item you were working with or something to that nature. There is a protection built in here to let you know that there's an error that's not working and that's not an, an option based upon what it is that you're trying to do. But if it lets you click the check mark, everything is good from that perspective. So I can go ahead and save and close that. And then I could go ahead and proceed to add another calculated field, which in this case we will go ahead and do. So I'm going to go ahead and add another calculated field. Now, this time, let's just say I'm going to give somebody maybe up to 10 days to actually go out and cancel their registration and still be able to get a refund. So I want to be able to calculate when the last day is that they can cancel. So that's one of the fields that I want to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a field called can cancel. I'm going to change this to a date and time. And I'm going to leave user local. And that's what I would recommend um, that the, the type of data is that you're working with has to match if you're trying to pre-populate dates or anything like that. And also with calculations, um, user local is the one that usually gives you kind of the best options. But again, I'm going to go ahead and choose calculated. And I'll edit this so it saves it. As this is loading, now I'm going to go ahead and I will just go ahead and add my, my final kind of actions here. So in this case, what I want to do is I just want to add days to the event registration date. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add days. I'm going to say that they get 10 days, so I'll just add 10 days. So I'll just type in the number I want. I could pull this in from a field if I had that information in a field as well. And then I can specify what field I want to use for the, for the date. So I'm going to go ahead and find registration date. And I'll click on OK. And so now this is going to add 10 days to that. Go ahead and hit save and close. Now the last one I want to show you is is kind of a like I said a kind of a neat one that allows you to actually go in and pull information from like a parental record or something like that. So let's say I want to capture some specific information about the contact. So in this case, maybe I want to be able to see their email address. So I'm going to go ahead and type in email address. I'll leave it at single line of text and I'll choose calculated. Now I'll go ahead and hit edit. Now this is a simplistic example. Obviously there's other items in the in the application that that do allow you to see the the email address and the related information from a parent record, you know, with like the quick view, uh, quick view forms and some of those things. But this is more illustrating concepts behind it. So in this case, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on contact. And so what I'm doing here is because I have that relationship, now I have a lookup field to the contact entity. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the contact, then I'm going to hit dot, and then I'm going to specify the field that I want to pull in off of the contact entity. And so you can see I have all these different fields that are specifically associated with the contact entity that I can choose from. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and choose email, and then I'll click on OK, and then save and close. And then I can save and close again. So the concepts behind creating the calculated fields are, are pretty straightforward. And now I could just go ahead and I could add them to my form. So I'm going to go to my registration form and I'll add them onto my registration form here real quick. And I already have some of this information kind of pre-populated from a time standpoint. But I'm going to go into registrant info. Um, I, I have the street address and most of this information is calculated fields. I'm going to go ahead and I'll switch to custom fields. And I'm going to add the email address to the general. So I'm going to go ahead and add the email address there. And then I'm going to scroll down to cost and cancellation. And I'm going to go ahead and enter in the total cost and the can cancel by. And then I'm going to go ahead and save. And just for to be safe, I'll publish all customizations.
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and we'll use the calculated fields. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate into my application here and I'm going to just go ahead and create an event. So I already have a custom entity called events uh, in there and I already have one called October team building and that's basically what we'll use for this purpose. So I'm going to go ahead now and go to registrations and create a new registration. So I'm going to click on new and I'll just call this um, October October financial planning. And now I'm going to pick the event. So I'll go ahead and select the event and only have got one here, but I'll just choose team building for purposes. I'm going to pick a contact. Now here's kind of, and now let me go ahead and enter a registration date. Say we registered today and there's five people in the party. Uh, let's say two people in the party. Now, the key thing to here to remember with these calculated fields is the calculations really only accomplish when you're going through and saving a record. And so I do have to initially save this record in order for the calculated fields to populate the information. But now all of that information is populated. It shows me the event that was tied to this particular item, the cost that was associated with it, pulls in the address information, the email address, calculates the total cost and tells me when we can actually cancel this event. Now it's different than, you know, clients scripting or business rules from a SAP point that you're not going to really get that real-time interaction but in something like this where maybe you don't necessarily need that but you don't necessarily want to have things pre-populated this gives you the flexibility now after the fact to actually go out and select you know a, a different person so I could come in here I could remove Jim I could pick Maria now when I save this Maria's information all populates into that scenario. So calculated fields are just a really a nice way to do some automation without necessarily having to have a developer at your disposal. So I hope this did a little bit to kind of clear up any questions that you might have on calculated fields. Definitely go out and give them a try. They're a nice, like I said, starting point to give you some flexibility without having to have a developer. And from that, I'd like to say again, this is Derek Borman, and thank you very much for watching.